Hi, I'm Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram. In this quick video, I will discuss uh, the role of nebulized uh, palmicot or nebulized abiodosonide in the neonatal intensive care unit. So most of us have used uh, nebulized uh, palmicot uh, in the NICU in different settings. So over the past few years, I have uh, developed a practice uh, where I'm giving it where uh, the baby is not weaning off non-invasive support. Uh, Bassler's study, which was published uh, a few years ago, uh, used uh, nebulized palmicot in a big group of babies. So they started right from birth in the randomized group and they continued till they were off uh, oxygen or till 32 weeks. So it was a significant length of time they were giving the nebulized palmicot. And in that study, even though BPD was reduced, there was a slightly increased risk of mortality. So uh, I wouldn't give that for such a duration, but I use it more in a selective group of patients. Uh, there are very few established treatments for uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia or chronic lung disease. As you would uh, see in the playlist on BPD, many experts have discussed it and you can go through those videos as well. Firstly, gentle ventilation from the start, avoiding unnecessary ventilation by invasive means, non-invasive ventilation from the beginning, keeping the appropriate pressures that the baby needs, uh, avoiding reflex by head and elevation as possible and uh, feeding pattern. Uh, I usually don't go more than two hourly feeds if the baby is on CPAP or high flow at a higher flow. Three hourly feeds is for the bigger babies who are not needing respiratory support. So the chances of reflux reduces when you have less milk in the stomach at any stage and that's a reasoning. Hourly feeds is not easy for both the baby and the nurse. So keep it for very rare situations and uh, continuous feeds is not ideal as well both from the feeding point of view and absorption point of view as well as a gut hormone uh, cycle point of view so bolus feeding of two hourly feeds in the small preterm babies is quite a reasonable option and uh, when we talk of uh, other measures uh, nutrition is very important preventing infection is important for preventing bpd as well so keep these measures in the background if a baby has extubated successfully, possibly after a DART regime if needed, uh, or uh, if you have succeeded in Insure or uh, LISA and kept the babies on non-invasive mode straight away, you allow them to stay on such modes for two weeks or so, or uh, up to 30, 31 weeks of corrected gestation. That is the time that you want to try and wean them off if possible. And I start nebulized palmicot uh, at this stage in most of the babies who continue to need uh, CPAP or uh, significant flow on high flow. I keep a dose of 250 microgram twice a day uh, for uh, five to seven days, and then I reduce it to 125 microgram twice a day. And we continue this till the baby comes off the flow. So if the baby does not show any response, I stop it after another week or so. Uh, I am against uh, use of diuretics in chronic lung disease mainly because there is no significant evidence to show that it changes anything and we all know how negative diuretics can be. So even one dose of uh, diuretic the baby may react more even if you use chlorothiazid not lasix and uh, they lose weight, uh, they have significant electrolyte disturbances. These are the visible effects but there may be so many invisible effects of this fluid disturbance in these babies. So. I avoid using diuretics and uh, palmicot. We believe at least that uh, a course like this is not going to have neurodevelopmental impact. The oral steroids as well, we are more comfortable using the DART where the BPD risk is high after uh, end of the first week or so. The other important point is about the appropriate timing of PDA treatment uh, because if you leave it too late, uh, then you, the negative effects have already set in. So I would refer you to watch the video by either Dr. Martin Cloco or uh, Patrick McNamara on this channel as well. And uh, I do agree with their viewpoint and it has helped in our practice the Iowa based approach where if uh, you do uh, echocardiography on the first uh, two to three days and there is a uh, reasonable sized PDA you treat it early and paracetamol treatment when you start early it seems to work better if it doesn't respond to the paracetamol and the baby is reasonably stable you can start brufen as a trial as well so timing of treatment of the PDA also influences your chronic lung disease it might influence your rate of necrotizing intracolitis if your PDA closes and it doesn't interfere with the gut flow for these babies so this is a practical video on uh, management of chronic lung disease and uh, use of palmicot in the 
neonatal intensive care. Uh, I rarely use Palmicot in a ventilated baby. It's not worth interrupting the ventilator pattern with the nebulizer when the effects are dubious. So mostly it's non-invasively ventilated babies who are stuck on it for some time who are approaching the time when you want them to move to suck feeds. So I hope this video is helpful and please do share. Thank you.